thank you all for joining us for another installment of the interview series that we have with people that are in HR and on the front lines uh, with regard to the mental health impact of employees and team members uh, that COVID-19 and this pandemic has on them. Uh, I have with me today Peter Hendrickson. He's with an organization called Integrated Behavioral Health, and they are, if you think of an EAP or an employee assistance program, they are that, but so much more and beyond. They do a lot of uh, population health management and things beyond a standard EAP, and I think he'll do a lot to bring some ideas uh, to this conversation because he's on the front lines every day. One of the things I want to get out of the way first, it's been reported to me that he's my doppelganger or I am his, however you want to look at it. So Peter, if you just look to your left very quickly, just go ahead and look to your left and I'll do the same. And so we can get all the views. You can look back now. We'll get all the angles out of the way and get that conversation done and behind us and we'll move on. So Peter, thanks so much for being here today. Hey, Ken, thanks very much. And that's why I'm wearing the headsets to differentiate us a little bit so people will be less confused. I was, I was concerned that if we were in the same color, I would have to change. So <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So let's just jump right into the questions that we've been asking HR leaders. And, and this will come from your angle as, like I said, being on the front lines of these mental health challenges that employees are facing. How just whether it's employees or organizations that you're working with or your own organization, how has the crisis changed just the day to day operations? operations and the, and the routine and activities of your workforces? Sure. So that's a perfect question. And the answer is the same really for our organization and the clients that we serve because everybody for the most part uh, is now working from home. So we went through a huge um, IT and HR lift with getting all of our 145 or so employees um, uh, working from home and setting up their workstations. And of course we had the same questions from our clients is how to manage that as best possible. So the trick has been, and this is what's key, whether you're a, a family leader, whether you're a team leader, or whether you're leading an entire organization, is to remember in this situation the old oxygen mask rule from airlines. Take care of yourself, make sure that you are okay, healthy, and up and running, and then reach out to others and aid them. So. Yes, what we did is we put a lot of time into getting our workers and making sure that their IT systems and our phone banks and our call centers were all ready to go. And then we said, okay, now we need to really jump into the fray and, uh, and serve our customers even harder. It doesn't mean that we were not taking calls and it's mean that we put a real effort into making sure we were prepared to do that. That's, that's a big part of the approach. Yeah, that's great advice. I love the idea of the, the airline analogy and taking care of yourselves first. I mean, not only as an organization, but just as individuals, we need to do that, right? Look, at, look out for ourselves uh, in sure. this time of challenge and then, and then look outward. So I mentioned a little bit, and I'll let you expand here about your organization as an employee assistance program and beyond. What resources have you been providing for your clients? What have people reached out to you in need of? Uh, what does that look like for your organization? Wow, it looks like so many different things, a real spectrum all across the rainbow, but it starts with communication. And I think the second lesson after taking care of ourselves first is as important as it is to communicate in regular times with our clients, with our family, it's so much more important to over communicate now and to use that communication as a bridge for engagement, for true engagement. So what we've had from our clients is, hey, can you give us some fun ways to spread the news that there's a help through the EAP, which is you know, your typical counseling where people need, especially now, financial or legal help or just some emotional help you know, getting through this crisis. How do we spread the word? How do we keep teams engaged? So there's lots of fun ways that we've done, again, both internally and have uh, given as ideas to our clients. And we've picked up a lot of great ideas from what our clients are doing on their own. So have a contest. Take a picture of your new home workstation and send it in. You know, make it fun. Make it festive as, if, as you want to see. You know, and then have everybody vote and see who likes who, you know, whose home set up the best. Um, there are things you can do uh, right now when communicating, it's really, really important to, if you can, when possible, create a sense of time, of a time frame for your folks. Because nobody knows what it's going to be like in 2021. Nobody may know what it's going to be like in December. But hey, everyone, today we're going to focus on this. 
this week we're going to accomplish these and these. Next month, the office in here is doing so as often as you can. It gives people comfort to heal, uh, to think of uh, time as something that they can manage, to think of the challenges they have, not as this unforeseen huge mass that they can't control, but hey, I can do something today and I know what I'm going to do this week and we're working on next week as well. So that's another part of that communication. Uh, Great. Guideline. Great. And so what do you see outside of the standard, as we know, EAP model, uh, employee assistance program model where people are calling in? Um, those are great ideas that you see. What do you see as far as leadership jumping in and trying to, to gain some uh, traction with their people and providing resources? What are you seeing there? Again, so there's so many things that can be done as far as communicating goes. So um, keeping to schedules and setting standard meeting times and making sure that the message of what we're doing. So what we do is, is, is the same kind of thing that you're, you're, you're providing for your clients right here is we have scheduled webinars that we record and share. Again, as we all know, this breaks on an almost hourly or daily, weekly basis. And whenever there's a new development, we try to make sure that we package that news in, a, in an informative non-threatening way and then send it out to all of our clients and what we've done at IBH is and I know other organizations have done this we've made this information available to to anyone who wants to go to our website it's no it's not limited to just our clients and a lot again a lot of other organizations have done the same thing and I think that's wonderful what's that website very quickly how do they get to your website ibhsolutions.com okay go right ahead thank you sure um, so then taking that information out there and there's a lot of in, a lot of things that we're doing on the digital side so on the text based coaching side as opposed to uh, face to face which now is of course very problematic as opposed to telephonic which some people aren't comfortable with but we're we've we've engaged several different apps and platforms that we can engage our clients and our clients members can engage cognitive behavioral therapy which is the best form of therapy to help people deal with crises like these and uh, by a, a, what we call asynchronous text-based coaching. So in other words, situation arises in the morning, um, you send a text uh, to your coach and say, hey, this is what happened again, this is what I, I felt, I felt like um, my spouse or my boss was demeaning me or not listening to me, blah, blah, blah. And then their coach will respond later in the day at a, at a prearranged time, say, yeah, I'm best between four and six in the afternoon, and say, okay, understood, and that is absolutely a stressor, um, here are some techniques we talked about handling. Whatever that dialogue is, that coaching, that cognitive behavioral therapy dialogue is, instead of having it take uh, place in a counselor or a doctor's office face-to-face, -face, it's something they can have via their um, device, which is maybe the way that they feel most comfortable communicating. So we're seeing a lot of that. And as I'm sure you know, some of the HIPAA laws about um, and, HIPAA and fees associated with telehealth have been waived for this circumstance as well. So it makes that a lot easier. You know, another idea I heard the other day that people are lacking is just the water cooler conversations and how that the absence of that is really causing a problem. What we've done in our organization and what we recommend for our clients as well is some people, you know, um, there's that piece of tape over the, over the camera on their laptop, you know, and they, they're, they're shy to share. Well, as much as we can, as safely as we can, we encourage people to, to not be shy, to, to do that, do exactly that. And if it's, maybe it's just a phone call or if a video chat is ideal, but yeah, absolutely. Whenever you can, to have an interaction in these times when we're all socially distancing or should be, it's, it's just very, very impactful. So the more we can do that, absolutely agree. That's a great idea. That's great. That's great. Well, those are all great ideas and I really appreciate you sharing those. People are starving for opportunities to be there for their people right now. I mean, business leaders and owners are dealing with so much coming at them with new legislation and all of that. But when they look inward to their people, you can hear this common theme of, I have to take care of my folks and make sure that they're uh, engaged and that they're in a good place. And so some of the things you mentioned today will be very helpful in helping them navigate that. Thank you so much for taking the time. I sure appreciate it. Hey, Ken, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day. Give you one more look. <laughs> Thanks.